Neumark geometric sequences. This question may surprise you, as you've probably seen in the title, it's going to involve modulus functions. Let's see why. So for the first part, five marks, we've got the second and third terms of a convergent geometric sequence, are x minus one and x squared minus one, where x is a real number, but x cannot be minus one or one. Find the range of x. So what does it mean that it is a convergent sequence? A convergent sequence is a sequence whereby the consecutive numbers are clearly going towards something, okay? So for example, if I had um, eight and I just kept halving it. So eight, four, two, one, a half, 0 0.25, etc. You can see it's going towards zero, okay? You're halving those values, it's going towards a certain number. Other sequences, like, you know, your recip graphs, x minus 1 over x plus 1, something like that would tend towards the number 1, and you can check that if you just keep inputting x values, make them larger and larger, that division will go towards the number 1. It's converging towards some value. We usually call that the asymptote, all right? Now, in terms of sequences, in order for this to happen, we must make sure that what we are multiplying by is between 1 and minus 1, okay? And that's the R value. All right, so we have to make sure that our R value is between one and minus one. It can't equal them. It's kind of what this is referring to. Maybe it might be to do with something else. We'll see in a second. So here you can see you're multiplying by a half, which is the second number divided by the first number, four over eight. Here we have two over four, etc. This value must always be here. But another way of writing this is we're saying, look, if we look at a number line, we have 0, we have 1, minus 1. We like to think of this in terms of distances. So if you're any point between minus 1 and 1, say here, your distance from 0 is less than 1. Okay, so here you can see that distance there is smaller than 1. And the way we write that is we put, use a modulus sign. That modulus means distance of r, so that distance of r from 0 is less than 1, okay? And this is the key to this first part, okay? Now here they're saying the second term, so our second term is x minus 1, and our third term is x squared minus 1. How do we work out r from there? Well, r is the second, or the third term, divided by the second. Yeah, I was just going to say second divided by first. I thought I'll just use these bits. Which can be simplified, because here we can use difference of two squares. They cancel r is uh, x plus 1. Okay. So the modulus of that has to be less than 1. So we're actually solving modulus functions here, which is quite a unique question. Now, how did I show you guys to solve modulus functions? You need to do a sketch, all right? So let's do a quick sketch. How did I very quickly explain to you how we find the vertex? You just make what's inside the modulus equal zero, just like you do with completing the square. That's when x is minus one. Then you get that V shape. Then you can work out where it crosses the, um, y-axis by just making x equals 0. Remember, we're kind of, uh, well, we're visualizing this by itself, okay? So when you make x equals 0, you get the modulus of 1, which is just 1. Now, we want to know when it's less than 1. So we're going to sketch on our graph just 1. y equals 1 is going to be a horizontal line, like that. And then we're saying, when is the v shape smaller or less than or below the vertical line, where well, you can see it's here. Yeah, you can see it's below, yeah, between wherever this x value is and this x value. But this x value is clearly zero, all right? So we just need to find out this point here, which is when this equals one. Now remember, we're looking at y equals x plus one. That's a positive gradient, that's this one. So this is y equals x plus one. This one will be the negative of that because that's the um, reflected part. 
So minus x minus 1. So we're going to let minus x minus 1 equal minus 1. Uh, oh, sorry, just plus 1. My bad. We're equating it to that. So we get x is minus 2. All right. And then we said, OK, when is the V shape below 1? It's below 1 between minus 2 and 0. So x is between minus 2 and 0. However, what else did we say? We said x cannot equal minus 1. So we just need to include that here. So we could say x is a real number and x cannot equal minus 1. I guess another way you could do this, you can write this in set notation. Yeah, you can break this up and say, look, we, we're not allowed this. So we could say it's between minus 2 and 1. In set notation, we would write this. Yeah. Or we could say or, or, between minus 1 and 0. Okay. So using set notation, that's how we do it. Remember, a curly bracket means it cannot equal minus 2. If it was a square bracket, it could equal minus 2. All right. And that's it. So at least here, we're saying that x cannot be minus 1. So we're breaking it up at minus 1. All right. So there's different ways we could represent our solution there. But if you guys are happy with this, you can use this instead. All right. Next part says, given that the sum to infinity is minus 6, find the two possible values of x. OK, now for geometric sequences, the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r, and they're saying that's minus 6. All right, now we know what r is. r is x plus 1, OK? So we can sub that into here. But we need to find out what a is. So from here, how could we work out what a is? Well, that's by dividing by x plus 1, right? So you have your, your second term, which is x minus 1. You have your third term, x squared minus 1. We go from here to here by multiplying by x plus 1. So we're going to go back to the first term by dividing by x plus 1, which means our first term is going to be x minus, whoops, x minus 1 over x plus 1. OK, so that's our first term that's going to go there. So we have x minus 1 over x plus 1, all divided by 1 minus r. Okay. 1 minus r, where r is x plus 1. Let's just clean this up first before we equate it to minus 6. So I get x minus 1 over x plus 1, all divided by, here I'm going to get 1 minus x, 1 minus x, then minus 1. So they cancel, we're just left with minus x. Okay? And then we can simplify that. Um, I'm going to do that over here. Now, it depends how you want to do this. I like to do this via the scaling method. So what does that mean? It means here's your numerator, that's your a. And this separately is the denominator, right? So you're saying, what do you need to times top and bottom by to get rid of that, de uh, that denominator within the numerator? We need to times top and bottom by x plus 1. So that cancels with that. And we're left with x minus 1 over minus x, x plus 1. So we're left with, uh, let's add a line here. We're left with x minus 1 over minus x, lots of x plus 1 is minus 6. Multiply through. So we get x minus 1, minus 6 times this is uh, 6x, x plus 1. Expand, I'm going to do that here, 6x squared uh, plus 6x. And we're going to move that to the other side. So we get 0 is 6x squared. Uh, we're doing 6x minus x, 5x. Then we're going to add the 1 over. And yes, I think this is going to be a 2x. Obviously, you can use your calculator here. But I think this is a clean factorize. 3x and 2x, 1, 1, both plus, right? Uh, 6x squared plus 3x plus 2x, it works. So either 3x plus 1 is 0, so we get x is minus 1 third, or 2x plus 1 is 0, so x is minus a half. 
and you can see both of those solutions lie within this range, isn't it? So x is minus a third and minus a half, they're both here. And it works. And that's very nice. So yeah, guys, that's a pretty unique question. If you learned something today, I really appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribe for more maths content. And if you want to submit your own questions and discuss more maths, uh, being the geeks that we are, you can join the Lung Gang Reddit page. Link is in the description. And if you're interested in my A-level maths course, information is also in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Noise. Nice.